other people's work, but that you're actually creating your own work and trying to develop your own voice as an artist. The third facet that we're really looking for, it's a little less exciting, um, but it is the documentation of your portfolio. The portfolio as part of your college application is one of the places where you show us that you're ready to be a professional artist and that you're ready to take your art seriously. One way that you can show this is by documenting your work thoroughly. What I mean when I say document your work is photographing your work. If you already do digital work, then that's downloading the files and making sure that you're presenting those cleanly. If you work in three dimensions, if you do painting and drawing, then it would be photographing your work. Um, so I'll talk more about details for that. Um, but those three principles, showing your experimentation, um, your innovation and discovering your own voice as an artist, and then documenting your work in a professional manner. Now, everything I'm saying right now um, is kind of general advice for uh, all sorts of visual arts portfolios for colleges in the US. Um, I, of course, come from California College of the Arts, so we have our own specific view on the portfolio. And I would always recommend for any college or university in the United States that you're applying to, to make sure to look at those colleges' portfolio requirements. Um, now, the first thing I want to talk about as I show you a bunch of examples of portfolio work is the importance of story. Every single college portfolio should look different, in part because the portfolio is part of how you introduce yourself to a college. You want to share your story with the universities that you're applying to. All of the work I'm about to show you in this presentation is from actual applicants to California College of the Arts. Um, all of these students applied last year, so this is all recent work, and this was all work that was of a high enough quality that we admitted the students to the college, and they all actually are attending the college. So these are very real portfolio pieces um, and current examples. The first student I wanted to share with you today is Danielle, um, and Danielle did a wonderful job of sharing the story of a portfolio. Danielle comes from a family of Holocaust survivors, and she was really interested in using her artistic practice to really explore that family heritage and understand how her family and their story had affected her today, um, you know, growing up in high school. Another thing that's important and kind of the other side of story is more relevant for any of you who might be interested in design. You know, not every uh, artist is necessarily exploring their own personal family story, their own heritage. Sometimes looking at your own story is more thinking about your brand and the kind of visual identity that you want to have as a designer. Uh, a great example of that is the work that I'm showing you here from one of our students, Louie White. Um, the first piece that you see on the left, the West Shore Shark Conservancy work, is fairly traditional graphic design work. Uh, you see letterhead, you see business cards, you see logo development, um, and that's very kind of good standard design work. Um, but what's cool and what I really appreciated in this portfolio was the inclusion of the piece on the right. The student also included a imagined ad campaign for this Shark Conservancy nonprofit. And the student, Louis, not only was an aspiring graphic designer, but also uh, was really interested in photography. So you can see in the piece on the right that he included that passion for photography. He assembled that kind of sculptural piece in the center, photographed it, and then included the logo and the text that he had developed in his earlier graphic design work. And so that blending of photography, of graphic design, and of a passion for sustainability and conservation all together told me a little bit about this student's personal brand and the kind of graphic designer they wanted to be. So when you think about the topic of story and how you're introducing yourself to a college or university through your art portfolio, definitely think of it very broadly, whether that's brand identity or personal narrative. I also do want to say it's okay in the college portfolio to have a little bit of fun, to be whimsical. I think sometimes I see college portfolios that are trying to be very serious and only have one or two kinds of work. And those portfolios don't tend to be as successful as the portfolios where people let their personality come through a little bit. 
This portfolio here uh, was from a student, Oliver, who applied for the animation program. And you can even see in these two stills from larger pieces that he had a really interesting visual identity, that the pieces were a little bit silly, they were funky. Um, and we really liked that about Oliver's portfolio because both of these pieces came from full length animations and they were incredibly technically strong, but they also had a sense of personality. So I want to remind you that when you're putting together your college portfolio, you don't have to choose between showing your technical skills and showing your personality as an artist. Ideally, if you're showing us work that's important to you, work that you had fun making, that will also show us your technical skill set. Now, this is one of those areas where different colleges across the United States are a little bit different. Um, some colleges are going to have specific requirements for the portfolio in terms of types of technical work. Other colleges, like California College of the Arts, the college I represent, have slightly broader portfolio requirements. So it's always good to go in and look at what the specific portfolio requirements are for the college that you are representing or that you are applying to. If they have a wide open portfolio, make sure to put in lots of your personal work. If they're asking for more specific technical pieces, make sure you also put those in as well. Another thing that I want to talk more about is experimentation. At the beginning, I said that's a really important part of the portfolio. We want to see that you're expanding your idea of what it means to be an artist and that you're trying different kinds of materials. The student whose work I'm showing here is Enya. Um, and Enya originally was an oil painter. She did a lot of work on canvases, um, but then she found that she was just doing too much painting and she was actually running out of canvases and you know, going to the store and buying more became pretty expensive. So the work you see here is actually what she did in response to that. Instead of continually going out and buying canvases, she started painting on surfaces she had available to her. And that started this project here where you can see that she's painting on rocks, on slabs of concrete. And all these different chunks of rock and concrete actually came from her own backyard, from her family members' homes. And the portraits that she did on these pieces are portraits of her family member. And so by experimenting with material, she was able to think about family in a very different way. And she grounded her work in very literal, heavy physical materials. So for Enya, the move away from traditional canvas and on to something a little more experimental opened up a whole new avenue of work. So you never know what you might get to do, um, but we always recommend experimenting. It's also a great idea to work in series. Um, this is true whether you're a photographer, a painter, a sculptor, as you can see the work here on the screen is. But one of the most important things in a college portfolio is to show us your conceptual work. We want to see the ideas behind your work, not just that you can, you know, copy a, a great master or you can, you know, have a really solid likeness of a bowl of fruit in a still life. We want to see the ideas that you're bringing to the table and creating a series of work is a wonderful way to do that because it shows us that you're thinking of one idea and executing multiple pieces of work about that single idea. So that shows us how you think and gives us a little bit of insight into your mind. Another thing to think about when it comes to putting together the portfolio is the process. Um, this is a place where different colleges and universities will have different expectations. Some schools will say in their portfolio requirements that they want to see your process. Other schools don't want to see your process and they only want to see the finished product. Neither one is right or wrong, just different schools have different expectations. At the college I work for, we love to see process. Um, it's again, a way that we understand the concepts and the way that you develop the ideas in your work. The student whose work I'm showing you right now, Tony, is a fantastic example of good process work. The piece on the left, he called it his feel box, is the finished piece. And then in the middle of the screen, you can see the work in progress, kind of the actual building, the interactivity of it. This is especially great for physical work if you're making sculpture and you want your 
uh, viewers to interact with the work, show us viewers interacting so we can understand what that would look like. Um, and then you can also see the sketches on the far right side. Um, those sketches, of course, they're not super high quality. They aren't finished pieces in and of themselves. But the reason they're useful is it shows us how Tony thought about different types of material, different types of shape, the interactivity and the way that hands are touching those different materials. So by showing us sketches, we can understand your process. And for those of you just starting to think about putting together your portfolio, this is a really great piece of advice because it helps you photograph your work while it's in process. Take photos of your original sketches, take photos of work while you're making it. You might include those in your portfolio to college later on, you might not, but that way you'll have them for whatever you decide to do. I talked at the beginning about the importance of documentation. Um, this is also sometimes called presentation. And it really is where you show us that you're taking your work seriously. Now, just because you're taking your work seriously doesn't mean that it has to be hard. Um, I really liked the presentation of this student's architecture project because it was incredibly simple. <clears throat> the piece itself is all cardboard and glue. There's nothing expensive. There's nothing fancy about it. But you can see the time and the care that went into making it. All the lines of the cardboard are clean, and the piece was photographed on a clean white background with multiple lighting sources. And that's really important because it means I'm not distracted, right? When I'm looking at this portfolio piece, there aren't, you know, piles of dirty laundry in the corner or, you know, messy bits of the notebook in the corner. We're just getting to focus on the piece of work itself and the multiple lighting sources really allow us to see all the details of this intricate piece. So my advice to you would be take the time to find a clean space to photograph your work. This can be as simple as finding a piece of, you know, white butcher paper or um, an old white sheet, creating a neutral backdrop and then getting multiple lighting sources. That might be a couple of lamps from around your house or maybe that's, you know, the flashlight on your phone camera from a couple different angles and having someone help you with that. It can be very simple. It doesn't need to be expensive. It doesn't need to be done, you know, anywhere other than your home or your school but it shows us the thought and the care that you're putting into it. Finally, the last thing I wanna leave you with is that the portfolio should be a representation of what you can do. Portfolios aren't the time to show us the work that you feel you weren't very good at or the work that you don't like. The portfolio is the time to show the pieces of art you've made that you are most excited about, the pieces that you're proud of, the pieces that you find interesting. The two pieces I have here on the screen are from two different students. The one on the left was actually a teeny tiny piece, just about six centimeters tall, very, very small and incredibly intricate and detailed. It was from a student who was applying for the architecture program. And so you can see this series of imagined cityscapes that he did. They were architecturally influenced, but also very playful, very detailed. And that told me a lot about what this student was interested in. You can compare that to the work on the right, um, which was much, much larger. It was poster sized and it was very vivid colors, a lot of text work. It was very historically researched. All the figures that you see in it are historical figures. And so it was an incredibly different type of work. But both of these pieces, the giant, you know, vivid poster and the teeny detailed architectural piece, they were both successful portfolio pieces because they shared what the students were passionate about and what made their work unique. So both of these were ultimately successful, even though they're very different. Um, those are the portfolio examples I have for you right now. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen for a little bit in case there are any questions. Are there any questions that anyone has? Um, if anyone has any questions, they can send it um, on the comment box. Um, you'll be able to access it at Columbia. It's on the right hand side of the screen. Yeah, I have that up. So if any of you want to type questions in, I'm more than happy to answer those. Anyone have any questions?
So that's a great question. Um, for those of you who can't see the chat box, the question was, does the student need to choose their major when applying? Um, and that's a question that depends on the university or college you're applying to. For the school I work for, California College of the Arts, we don't have students uh, choose their major when they're applying. Some colleges and universities do. And as you can imagine, that will change how you plan your portfolio. If you're applying to a school uh, where you're just generally showing your interest, the type of work that you've done as an artist, um, then it can be absolutely any type of work. But if you are applying to a specific program, it's possible that that specific program or that college or university will have requirements related to the program you're applying to. So this is again somewhere where each and every school is different and the best advice I can give you is to go on those schools websites, you know, Google the name of the school and portfolio and see what the portfolio requirements are, if they're major specific or if there are any general school requirements. Yeah, so for photography students, um, the advice about working in series is especially important. Um, the question was, how do photography students put together a portfolio? And I would say that again differs school to school. If you're applying to a school where it's a portfolio specifically for photography, definitely follow their requirements. If you're applying as an aspiring photographer to a school with a general portfolio, I would definitely say, put your photography work first and foremost and show us your range as a photographer. If you've done a series of work, definitely make sure to include that. Um, if you have different types of work where you're showing different technical skills, include that. Um, and some schools may ask for other kinds of fine art outside of photography, in which case do that if the school is telling you that's what they want. Um, but if the school isn't giving you specific requirements, it's absolutely fine to have an all photography portfolio unless the college tells you otherwise. The next question I got was, does the material in my portfolio have to be work made in my high school years? Each school will tell you what they want to see, if they want to see work from this year, from the last five years, recent work. Um, and I would say, in general, it will always be in your best interest to have the most recent work in your portfolio. The reason I say that is because your work gets better. Every year that you develop more skills, every year that you practice more, your work becomes stronger and stronger. And so by putting in the most recent work in your portfolio, you're most likely also going to be sharing your strongest work. And of course, as an applicant to college, you want to show us your strongest work. So I would generally advise for most colleges showing us work made in the last one to two, maybe three years, um, but certainly work that you've made in high school. Which platform uh, does the student use to upload files to CCA? This is actually one that's pretty consistent for colleges across the United States. Almost all art schools and many large universities with art programs use SlideRoom. SlideRoom is an online portfolio platform. Um, and so you go in there and you upload pieces of work. At CCA, we're going to ask that you upload 10 to 15 pieces of work. Other colleges and universities may ask for, um, you know, 5 to 10, 15 to 20, but typically somewhere in that 10 to 20 pieces range. And when we say upload digitally, you know, 10 to 15 pieces of art, what we really mean is 10 to 15 different projects. So if you want to collage together a couple different figure drawings that you've done, that's okay. That can count as one piece because that's one file that you're uploading to SlideRoom. Um, for the student who asked about photography earlier, if you maybe have a comparison set from photography where you took two photos together and those are illustrating, you know, one technical skill or something like that, it's okay to put those two photos together and upload it as one file. So maybe putting two images on a PDF together. So there's a little bit of flexibility when um, colleges ask for 10 to 15 or 15 to 20 pieces of work, but in general, somewhere 10 to 20 digital files uploaded to SlideRoom. Now, what SlideRoom can accept is 
very, very broad. So images, JPEGs, PDFs, anything like that, um, but also video files, audio files, Word document files, any of that can be included. So if you're a film student and you want to submit a screenplay in a Word document, a short film clip, and some images that you've taken as pre-studies for a film, all of that could be included in slide room. As for animation students, um, the question was, should it contain any animation work in the portfolio, even if the student doesn't know much? This is a great question, and it actually applies to a lot of different um, majors, a lot of different colleges. Um, what I would advise is, first and foremost, that piece of advice, look at what the specific college you're applying to is asking for. Some colleges where you are applying directly to an animation program will have very, very specific animation requirements. If a college is telling you specifically to include something, definitely follow that requirement. Now, if you're applying to a school like CCA that does not have any specific portfolio requirements, but you are interested in studying animation, I would say share what you have. So if you've had a chance to dabble in a little bit of animation and you've maybe tried one or two short you know, mo motion graphics, submit those. If you haven't had a chance to do that yet, that is okay. Um, in that case, I would say rely on hand-drawn work. So things like figure drawings, things like sketches in your portfolio, observational work, you know, whether that's a drawing you've done of your bedroom, a drawing you've done of your classmates, um, things that are related to um, the world around you and observational drawings, drawings of humans, all of that is really important for animation. So sharing even still drawings can be helpful for an animation portfolio. Um, the next question I have is in case of a student that has already graduated a college here in Brazil, how does it work in CCA or other universities? That's a great question. Um, there are kind of two possible answers here. If you already have um, a bachelor's degree or equivalent degree in Brazil and you want to come study in the U.S., you could either apply for a second bachelor's degree in the U.S. if, you know, the degree you already have is completely unrelated to art and design and you want to start fresh at an art college in the U.S., you could apply for a second degree, sometimes referred to as a post-baccalaureate program, um, or if you're interested in studying at a master's level, you could apply for graduate programs in fine art at colleges and universities in the U.S. That would be if your undergraduate education already has been related to art and design and you want to further that at a higher level, then you would apply for the master's degree. So it kind of depends on, on what you want to do. Does that answer your question? If you have any follow-ups, feel free to put them in the chat. Great, glad that answered your question. Um, are there any other questions? I will say overall, when it comes to thinking about your portfolio, um, my best piece of advice is to read the portfolio requirements. See what schools are asking for. This is not a mysterious process. I know it can feel a little bit mysterious, but schools tend to be pretty good about telling you what they're looking for. So look at the college website, read their requirements. If they don't make sense or you are wondering, you have a piece of work and you're not sure whether it fits the requirements, it is okay to reach out to the schools. Um, I'll leave my contact info in the chat here. Um, so if you have any questions for CCA specifically, you can always reach out to me. Um, but if you're applying to other schools and you have questions, most of those schools will have email addresses for international students or on their website, they will list an admission counselor who helps out students uh, applying mm -hmm. from Brazil. Was that Perfect. a Perfect, thank you so much, Columbia. Um, yeah, of course. Bom, gente, para todo mundo que tiver alguma dúvida, se tiverem dúvidas finais, podem mandar aqui no chat. É, se depois tiverem dúvidas específicas para a CCA, podem, a gente pode compartilhar o contato da Columbia com vocês. É, ela acabou de colocar aqui no chat, na verdade. E vocês podem sempre entrar em contato com a Education USA também, se vocês estiverem interessados em outras universidades. A gente ajuda com todo 
o processo de candidatura, qualquer dúvida que vocês tiverem sobre ensino superior nos Estados Unidos. É, então, thank you so much, Columbia, for sharing this information with us. Um, we joining. recorded this session, yes, so okay. we'll be able to share it with a lot of other students that are interested. Um, we get a lot of art students that have questions about their portfolio, so this is great for us and um, so good to share with everyone else. Absolutely, and I put my email address in the chat. You're welcome to reach out to me anytime if you have questions. And of course, your Education USA advisors are always a wonderful source of information, so you can always go there first. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Columbia. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.